Hello, my name is Sean Murphy, and I'm a research assistant and former master's student of Dr. Casey Hubert at the University of Calgary. Uh, so today I'll be presenting on the biodegradation of oil at cold temperature by bacteria indigenous to the Labrador Sea. And this is part of the MEO Power funded project on baselines and biodegradation potential in Atlantic Canada's deep water offshore oil prospects. So why focus on the Labrador Sea? Well, to date, all provincial oil production has occurred off of the island portion to the southeast. So this leaves a high potential for future oil and gas discoveries in the Labrador Sea. There are currently 10 oil exploration lease blocks up for bid in 2023, and this may initiate drilling in this northern marine environment. But what makes this area different from other oil production zones in the province? Well, to start, these lease blocks here are situated in deep water, so 500 to 3,000 meters below sea level, whereas Newfoundland's current and deepest well is only 120 meters below sea level. Additionally, the Labrador Sea remains relatively cold throughout the year and has a heavy occurrence of sea ice. So together, these factors increase the risk of a crude oil spill occurring. This puts not only marine wildlife at risk, but also indigenous coastal communities. So shown here is the Inuit Nanatsiova land claim agreement, which extends along the majority of the coast of Labrador. So we know that microbes with the potential to degrade oil are ubiquitous within our oceans. But how do microbes respond to oil at higher latitudes and colder temperatures? Obviously, we can't go around spilling oil in the environment and then observing the effects. But what we can do is collect microbial samples from the environment, for example, seawater or marine sediment, and then use this as inoculum to generate simulated oil spills in the lab using microcosms. So microcosms are artificial, simplified ecosystems that are used to simulate the behavior of natural ecosystems, but under controlled conditions. Different microcosms essentially address different questions. So for example, one thing that I'm interested in is how can we increase microbial biodegradation of oil at cold temperature? One strategy I use is the addition of nutrients. So I compare oiled microcosms with and without nutrient addition. So from these microcosms, I'm able to observe changes in microbial community composition using next generation sequencing, as well as the degradation of oil using oil chemistry. I can then make inferences about how microbes might respond to oil at four degree temperatures in the Labrador Sea. So these are just some results from microcosms that were incubated with crude oil at four degrees. And here I'm showing results from the original sediment communities, from those incubated with crude oil and those incubated with crude oil plus nutrients. So these here are all bacteria that were shown to have significant increases in their abundance in relation to crude oil addition. Uh, the circles here represent the relative abundance of those bacteria within the population. So two genera that increased quite heavily were Cycloclasticus and Merinobacter. Uh, so members of Cycloclasticus are considered to be obligate oil degraders, and they're known to degrade aromatic hydrocarbon compounds as well as polycyclic aromatic hydrocarbons, or PAHs, exclusively in the marine environment. Merinobacter bacteria, shown here, are known to degrade both alkanes as well as aromatic hydrocarbons. So an interesting thing to know is that both of these oil degrading bacteria had greater abundance when nutrients were added. So shown here and shown here. And when we look at the geochemistry of the oil at the end of the incubation, nutrient addition allowed for greater losses among both alkanes as well as PAHs. The Labrador Sea Ecozone represents an area of increasing relevance for large-scale crude oil spills. Marine microbiology has historically not been incorporated into the environmental assessments in this region, but there is a growing demand for microbial biodiversity evaluations in offshore areas of industrial relevance. Biodegradation at low temperature is especially important to consider, given that the sea surface temperatures in this region remain relatively cold throughout the year, and most oil spill studies have focused on higher temperatures and so they're not really representative of this region. Understanding how different remediation strategies, like nutrient addition, uh, can improve microbial biodegradation of oil is essential for informing future decisions of oil spill response. And this is the first study to uncover how microbial communities indigenous to the Labrador Sea respond to oil and nutrient amendment under in situ temperature conditions. So this study in the Labrador Sea constitutes just part of the bigger picture of the project dealing with biodegradation potential in Atlantic Canada's deep water offshore oil prospects. Uh, Nova Scotia has been a main focus of this study since it is also being considered as an area for future oil production in deep water. So that's it for my presentation today. Thank you very much for listening and thank you very much Mio Parra for your continued support of this research.